If you love Walt Disney World and you're looking to go and have a good time with low crowd levels and perfect sunshine, well, we're here to tell you that the next month is probably about the best time you could go. Crowd levels crashing at Disney World, spring break not coming through, not delivering for Bob Iger, and the month of May could be record low levels. So folks, get out there. You don't need Genie Plus. Hello and welcome back to the Pro Channel. We are so happy to have you. Happy Sunday, everyone. If you're watching on the day of arrival for this video, hot, fresh, and just for you, Culture Casino also always ready to go. Welcome back, sir. Well, thanks for having me, Pro. I can't wait to talk about this. I think we've both been thinking the same thing when it comes to the parks. That's right. Now, I do have to say, though, I have been wrong, Culture. I've been wrong on something. What? I told my audiences that I believed that Disney Parks might see a nice little resurgence this year. I, I, I had this feeling that uh, some folks out there, some families had gotten tired of boycotting and staying away and going to, to do other things. And well, I was wrong because the data is in and Pro is realizing that uh, sentiment against Disney must remain. Here's the data that we have folks. Yes, we're talking about high level data. It's the only kind of stuff we do just like yesterday when we showed you what was going on with uh, with Hulu, with Disney Plus, and with a little streaming service called Tubi. As we get into the data today, folks, click that like button if you like content like this. We're going to thrilldata.com, a website I highly recommend. And this is really complicated looking, but it's not, folks. I want to show you what we're talking about here and why. If you are wanting to go to Disney World, let's say you've got an annual pass that's about to uh, lapse. Let's say that you... Uh, You've got some long overdue tickets sitting in the closet that uh, never expire, non-expiration passes you've had since the 90s. It's time to go if you want to go. If you, uh, you know, everybody has their opinions about Disney and whether they want to continue supporting them. But if you are one of those who wants to go, this would be the time. Here's why, Culture. If we go back into 2022 and we look at the month of April, which is what we're hovering over right now. You know, March and April are really, really strong months for Disney World Resort and for other theme parks because of spring break. And so we can see that the average wait time, 42 minutes, 41 minutes, 40 minutes. These are broken down into weeks. And then in April, 40 minutes, 39 minutes. And what that's correlating to is crowd levels, right? Now, we're only using Magic Kingdom. These are not the entire Walt Disney World Resort. And the reason for that is because we don't want to mess up the data with stuff like festivals at Epcot or... Uh, openings at Hollywood Studios or any of the kind of stuff that might throw us off a little bit. So we're going to Magic Kingdom. Magic Kingdom is also the, the uh, highest demand park. So that's why we're using this. If we go to 2023, we can see that demand for Disney parks, or at least Disney World, was down. And there's no way around that. It was down. We called it. We've told about it. And that's why we have concerns about Disney. Well, one of many. But take a look at this. Starting uh, the uh, third week of March, Average wait times were 38 minutes, dropped to, to uh, 34 minutes. Then we got into April, it was 38 minutes, 36 minutes. And then it kind of fell way, way down for the end of April and May. And that also is what we typically see, although it usually holds into May. And that's because we get into prom season, we get into graduations, and people don't go to the parks as much. Now, these are significantly down, and that means crowd levels were down. But take a look at this. Well, it's one of the reasons that I thought that Disney might do well is because I was looking at uh, the last week of March. And the last week of March was very interesting because there was a confluence of uh, having uh, several spring breaks all happen at once. Same thing that happened in early March, by the way. But since then, reality has set in. And whereas April has usually been very good, April has been horrible for Disney. The first week of April, 35 minutes, and then we crashed. We absolutely crashed 24 minutes, 23 minutes in the most recent week. Now, this weekend has been crowded because of the Disney run uh, races that have been taking place. But folks, with this kind of drop off from, uh, from March to April, you don't see this. We're, we're almost down in September level, right? These are the wait times you see in September, which is the lowest crowd levels you'll see any time of the year at Disney World. We're almost there and we're in April. Wow. So where could this go? Well, we could be we could be looking at the lowest crowd levels for the entire month of May. Um, we could be seeing the lowest crowd levels since the pandemic. And culture, that's that's startling because 
Magic Kingdom has less capacity than in the past because they took down Splash Mountain. And so that means that these wait times, these wait times should be at least holding steady, but probably rising because wait times should go up with less attractions to be able to uh, get people onto to enjoy. Uh, Culture, what are your thoughts on, on, on Disney World and what we're seeing here, which is an absolute collapse in crowd levels? Well, first and foremost, I think right at the end there, you hit on the thing that 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 struck me the most, which is with um, Splash Mountain closed to be remade into some kind of mud cave of something um, or whatever, uh, Tiana's Bayou Adventure or whatever, TBA, which is the worst possible acronym you could have possibly come up with, um, you lose a huge people eater. That attraction holds a lot of folks, and it has an enormous queue. Um, it, it, it has the capability of holding a lot of people in. So normal foot traffic around the park when something like that is closed is is evident. You see tons of people out and about milling between restaurants, bathrooms, and of course attractions. Um, I anecdotally from you and many others who visited the the park in the last several months during its closure uh, have reported that yes, there's that number of of bodies roaming about. But if you're looking at a queue that eats that many people per hour, and I haven't I haven't looked up what the normal operational data is for recent performance for the attraction. But if you have that type of attraction closed, you're going to have an expanded wait time at pretty much every other e-ticket because make no mistake, Splash Mountain was the most appreciated attraction in the park, most popular in most of the parks that it's in. Right. right. That's Um, per polling. So for those out there who are saying it was a horrible ride, it, it made fun of people. It was terrible. It called back to an awful thing. And it was, listen, folks, since the nineties, it's been the most popular attraction per polling, per surveys on the planet. So, you know, yeah. And specifically in Florida, it's very popular because you get wet (laughs) and you need to be cooled off at certain times of the year there. Um, it's it, so it, it, when you lose something like that, all of those wait times are going to jump. So they've done the opposite. The wait times have gone down. So you, your attendance in the park is lessened. It has to be, um, when you were looking at the thrill data, uh, you know, uh, numbers there, you, you, you notice that the weight factor has been dropping. It, it's, if it follows historical trends and it's well under, um, it, it's well under the, it, it, it's trending down. Uh, well below expectations. I, I think I think we're looking at the beginning of May with very soft attendance numbers. I, I, th- I think the 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 data and the historical data and normal trends are pointing towards it. That's why right. I, mean, we, we, I, I love when we look at hard data because it's pretty easy to track. We we could have some sort of strange pattern that doesn't follow you know the past ten years, but what happens is that May is lower than April. And you can yeah. just, you can set your, your watch by it. So, you know, this is, this is bad for Disney, but again, folks, if you want to go to Disney world, if you want to go, like, you know, you've got an extra pass or whatever, or there's a family member who's just demanding you go, you know, I can't recommend that Disney world is in the best state it's ever been. And that it's a must do right now. It's not, it's just not, I love Disney world. It's not in the greatest place it's been. And there are folks out there who have moral reasons that they don't want to support it and go to the park. But, you know, if you do want to go, May should be empty. I mean, it just flat out looking at the data, it should be empty. But this this also culture has uh, something to do with the timing of the release of uh, Tiana's Bayou Adventure, which we're looking right now at an image that Blog Mickey put out. My understanding is they've enhanced uh, some of the colors in the water to try to show what the uh, final lighting package is going to look like. But it's bad enough with just the lighting everywhere else. It's like they used every color of the rainbow. Um, that's that's not to make fun of this attraction right now, but it's to say that culture. We're hearing now very strongly from multiple sources that Disney's plan is to open Tiana's Bayou Adventure unfinished in June. And the reason that they apparently need to open it unfinished in June is they desperately need to salvage the summer because they're looking at the same data we're looking at, only they have it in higher fidelity. And they're realizing they need a new attraction and they can't miss the summer. And so, from multiple sources we've talked to, they're not going to have the the ride finished, but you're going to ride it if you're there, if you're so willing, because they're going to open this thing up. They're going to try to generate money off of it because that's what they do with new attractions now. And if there are missing animatronics, if there are empty scenes, so be it. They're going to open this attraction. And 
you know, this, this doesn't look quite as good to me as, uh, you know, I just don't know what's going on with Disney. Like this lighting is just, it's something special, but anyway, uh, culture, what do you, what do you think of the idea that Disney is, is so desperate that they'll open an unfinished ride to get audiences and crowds and families back to the parks? I wish I could say that I thought it was unsurprising, but I can't. Um, I, I, this seems to be, this seems to be a pattern for them. Um, uh, but it is, it is surprising that they would go to these links. Um, to, to, to just deliver an attraction that's incomplete. But, you know, again, I, I wanted to give them benefit of the doubt. Look at what happened with the Disneyland Hotel t- Tower remodel, right? We're still, we're, we were hearing about rooms that were unfinished. Oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. there's the there's the new story, too, about, uh, I, don't, I don't know if you saw this culture out of uh, Fox Business, mm-hmm. that Disney's going to start replacing the, the Disneyland uh uh, light poles because too many of them have fallen down and hit, hit guests on the head. Those are not small items. So well, th- it, there's some the maintenance days, issues here. Yeah. In the old days, those were custom casts and they're made out of like actual heavy duty metal. And they just, it, that points to a whole other problem, which is maintenance. So my concern is if they're, if they're shortcutting and cheapening out on Tiana's, uh, Bayou adventure, um, then I'm I'm very concerned with the whether or not they shortcut you know the the installation of the animatronics and all the other features that are in Splash Mountain. Um, electricity around water is kind of dangerous. I, I don't know. If anybody <laughs> I've heard about that. that. I've heard about that. Yeah. So I, I'm just worried, <laughs> but I, I I've been worried about Disney's uh, uh, quality for a long time, and I think Absolutely. I think you're going to get to experience you know this new breed of Imagineering in this new attraction here coming up. But, Pro, I mean, they're still going to have fog. Oh, Bayou Magic fog. Mm-hmm. Um, but, folks, what we, I guess what we would like to say is, you know, we have, Culture and I, we have very fond memories of mm-hmm. Disney World and Disneyland as they were. Mm-hmm. There's still some of the magic there. Um, sure, the, the uh, hands might be falling off the animatronics in uh, Carousel of Progress, but you know what? There's still some magic to be had. And if you have been looking for that window of opportunity to take a small child down Main Street to see Cinderella's Castle, we are not going to fault you one bit for going in May. It's probably the best time ever. And considering culture that we already know they're going to raise prices next year, there's probably no better time. If you still want to go to Disney World, there's probably no better time than right now. Go this next month, go for the next four weeks. If you're wanting to go, this is the best time. So, culture, as we end, Mm-hmm. We are very critical of modern Disney and what they've done to the parks, mm-hmm. among other things that Disney has done. But culture, if you had to tell folks one thing that they should still do at Disney World, on a positive note, what would you say? I would ride the train. <laughs> ride, ride the train the around train. Magic Kingdom? Yeah. I, if, for whatever reason, that's probably one of the, the magical moments you can give yourselves. Do a complete circuit. And then follow that up with a ride on on uh, the People Mover, and then follow oh, that the up. People Mover. I love the yeah. People Mover. And then and then follow that up. Go through like the classic offerings, you know, in that in that park. All the all the what I call Bob Gurr love, right? Go and do all of that because you won't be disappointed. They 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 may not offer a thrill, but they offer an opportunity to experience what people could create when they had vision. When they had right. the, the, the the ability to look forward, um, I tell people all the time. I had fifty years of magic with Disney until finally it was so tarnished it was unrecognizable. But I still can get a thrill out of doing that. If you get if you get any of the moments that were designed, um, even up in recent moments, because again we're talking about classic things. But if you look at anything that that was done by Tony Baxter or Joe Rohde, the level of uh, uh, the level of detail and craftsmanship that went into anything that they were a part of is evident. And it, that's, that's, that's right. it. Enjoy those things. Yeah. Folks, I would recommend if you're going, uh, check out Illuminous at Epcot. It's not the greatest soundtrack in the world, but the, the pyro is awesome. So it's good to know there's some people still there doing some great stuff. And I would tell you to go ride Big Thunder Mountain Railroad because they're going to start go. mucking about over there and messing things up. But for now... That ride still stands and is a, a beautiful testimony to what 
ingenious Imagineers once did. Go ride Big Thunder. It's the wildest ride in the wilderness. All right, folks, we've come to the end of this wildest video. We hope it was helpful for you, whether or not you're wanting to dunk on Disney because the crowds are down, cool. If you're wanting to go because, well, this is the time to go out of all the times you could possibly go, well, cool, we've helped both sides. Culture, thank you for being a part of it. Folks, if you're not subscribed yet to Culture Casino and everything he's doing, you are missing out, and I want you to miss out no more. Get over there and subscribe today to Culture Casino. And folks, also, don't forget that we've got two editions of the Pro Show coming out this week. One at Tuesday, noon Eastern, in which we will feature the return of Mexican Iron Man after viciously and victoriously slaying Tax Day. We also have a special edition of the Pro Show coming out Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, where we will be celebrating members and subscribers of the channel. We cannot wait to have you there for both. So, folks... As we always say, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing, and as always, keep having fun. Oh. What are you doing? Well, y you see, I wanted to get some inside scoops on Disney and their uh, different corporations, if you know what I mean. So I figured, by looking to this fistbowl and sucking it randomly with my own energy that I pay for, uh, uh, you paid for, I could do the whole experience where you can be a master and spy on your targets. You're an idiot. If you want to get the inside scoop on Disney or even other media organizations, you should check out thatparkplace.com and subscribe to WDW Pro's YouTube channel. That'd be way easier, more accurate. And, uh, let's do Are you saying I won't get accurate information this way? No. No, you can't. Yeah. Who'd have thunk? Yeah.